Um, this video talks about rational functions. And if you think about rational numbers, they're numbers that are basically fractions or can be represented as fractions. So an example of a rational function is basically a fraction with polynomials on the top and on the bottom. So that's what it looks like. This is an example of a rational function. And you're going to talk about graphs of rational functions, but really what I want to um, discuss um, are what we call vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and holes. Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and holes. So let's start with vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are vertical lines. So for example, here's you know an example of a graph. This is a graph of a rational function such that there's a vertical line on the y-axis that the graphs never touch, never cross. Um, and that you know invisible line that these graphs. And this is technically we should not be curving back that way because it's a function. Um, that invisible vertical line, which we represent as a dotted yellow line in this case, um, that invisible vertical line that these graphs, the graph of you know, these curves never cross, is called a vertical asymptote. So that's what they are, vertical lines that graphs never touch, which means that these are values that um, are not in the domain. Well, how do you find a vertical asymptote? First, you have to um, simplify your function completely. And after you simplify, you're going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Okay? So the reason that you simplify first is because sometimes you have these discontinuities um, in the function, like for example, a whole. And it happens, you know, you have this thing here. Um, it's called a discontinuity because it's a you know, piece of the graph that's kind of like taken out. We call it a removable discontinuity when it's a whole. Um, again, that's also a value that does not go into the domain. But that happens when you have, for example, x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 5 x plus This is an example of a rational function unsimplified. To simplify it, I'm going to factor the top and factor the bottom if it does. And in this case, it does. When I factor the top and factor the bottom, and some of them will do this, you'll notice that um, I have a repeated expression on the top and on the bottom, x plus 2. When that happens, the expression is removed right, from the function, it simplifies into x minus 2 over x plus 3. This x plus 2 is removed from the function. We call it a removable discontinuity. I have a removable discontinuity. Now, the removable discontinuity is also a hole, right? That means that the graph has a hole at a specific point. In this case, it has the hole at the x-coordinate negative 2. Find the hole such that when you set this equal to 0, whatever that x value is, that's the point in which um, the hole exists. So because this is x plus 2 that's leaving, whatever value I plug in for x here, in this case minus 2, that makes this 0 is where the hole exists. And if I want to determine the y-coordinate, I plug the x-coordinate into this function here. So, now I have the simplified version of this rational function, right, which is um, x minus 2 over x plus 3, right? So my first step to find vertical asymptotes is to simplify. If you simplify and something goes away, that means that you have a hole at that value that makes that 0. You have a removable discontinuity. So x plus 2 is not going to give me a vertical asymptote. It's going to give me a hole. But after I'm simplified, whatever is left, I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0. In this case, x plus 3 equals 0. This is going to give me x is equal to negative 3. This is the equation of the vertical asymptote, which I'll do the vertical asymptote. This is the equation of the vertical asymptote because it is a vertical line that the graph never crosses. So the vertical asymptote 
for this particular function is at x equals negative 3. The whole exists at x is equal to 2. This is a point. Um, so here, let's do another example. Let's say that I have x plus 3 over x minus 2. Um, let's just say 2x minus 1. Here's a rational function because it's a fraction with polynomials on the top and on the bottom. I can't simplify it because it won't factor. Nothing is going to cancel, so there's no removable discontinuity. There's no hole in this one. It's already simplified. But it does have a vertical asymptote because I can set the denominator equal to 0 and get a value. My vertical asymptote is at the line x is equal to 1 half. So if I'm going to graph this, there'd be a vertical line at that x equals 1 half that the graph will never touch or never cross. Now, horizontal asymptotes. These are a little bit more difficult. Not too difficult, but they're a little bit more difficult. Um, you have to compare the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator to determine horizontal asymptotes. It's not as simple as just set the denominator equal to zero. So you have three cases. First case, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then your horizontal asymptote has the equation y equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals ratio of leading coefficients. I'll show you right now. Third scenario, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. You have a slant or oblique asymptote. Okay, so we're comparing degrees. So let's do an example. And I'm just going to find horizontal asymptotes for these cases. Here is a uh, rational function. Um, and it's not really simplified, but even if I simplify it, you know what I mean? Nothing's going to cancel. So it's not going to have a removable discontinuity. There's no hole. It's going to have two vertical asymptotes. Right? One of them at x is equal to 0 and the other one at x is equal to negative 2. And it does have a horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. That's case 1. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the no denominator, then y equals 0 represents our horizontal asymptote. Here's another 2x squared plus 3x over 5x squared minus 3x plus 1. Here's another uh, rational function, which does simplify, right? But even if I simplify it, it's not going to do anything for me because the bottom is not going to factor. So it does not have a whole. It does have vertical asymptotes when I set the denominator equal to 0, which I would have to use the quadratic formula to do if it does not factor. And it does have a horizontal asymptote. And the reason is because the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So that's case two. The degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. The ratio of the leading coefficients. Well, the leading coefficients in the numerator is two. The leading coefficients in the denominator is 5, and their ratio is 2 over 5. You're basically taking just that fraction to get your horizontal asymptote if the degrees are the same.
If x squared minus 2x, if this is a rational function, again, if I simplify it, doesn't do anything, I still have a vertical asymptote oops, at x is equal to negative 1. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? The horizontal asymptote, well, I have to compare the degrees. The degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom. The degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So that means that I don't have a horizontal asymptote. I have a slant or oblique asymptote. And I will show you how to do that in the next video.